All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to talk about what it means for a function to be bounded. So definition, a function f is bounded if there is some constant m, so if there is m positive such that f of x is less than or equal to m for all x. So same as boundedness for sequences, except we replace it with f of x. And picture-wise, what does that mean? It just means that f is squeezed between m and minus m. So if this is m and minus m, then f is just trapped between the two. Think like sine of x that's between minus one and one. But a function that's not bounded kind of shoots off to infinity in some sense. So no matter which m I give you, or minus m, then this function just blows off here. <laughs> this is a function that's not bounded. And what I wanna show today is that if your function is continuous, so fact, if f from a, b to r is continuous, then it is bounded. And by the way, it's still true if you replace a comma b by any compact set. That's also fine. And that said, it's very, very important though that you have the closed interval a comma b because in general for open intervals, this is not true. So let me give you a sweet counterexample. If you take f of x equals one over x on the interval zero comma one, let's say here zero comma one, then this function is unbounded. It just blows off to infinity. All right, and let me prove this. It's a very nice analysis proof. So suppose not. That means for every real number m, you have some x such that f of x is bigger than m. So in particular, this is true for every natural number. So then, for all n, there is, there is some x, but since x depends on this natural number, let's write it xn in your closed set a comma b, such that f of xn is bigger than n. So let me draw a quick picture of what's going on. So suppose you have a function f on your closed interval a comma b. So again, it might look something like that. Then what we're saying, if f is not bounded, it means no matter how big n is, you can always find some xn such that f of xn is bigger than n. But here's the thing, since you have it for all n, you therefore get a sequence xn, like that. What do we know about the sequence? Well, the sequence is in a comma b. Then xn is in a comma b. But here's the thing, a comma b is finite. So in particular, the sequence itself is bounded it cannot just shoot off to infinity. So hence, xn is bounded. But what do you know what bounded sequences in R? Bolzano Weierstrass. Ouch. Okay, uh, so because we have a bounded sequence in the real numbers, xn must have a convergent subsequence. So by 
Bolzano-Weyer Straße, Xn, has a convergent subsequence subsequence, and let's call it Xnk. Okay. With Xnk converging to X0. So again, we have this sequence Xn, and from that we can extract the convergent subsequence Xnk, okay, that converges to some X0. Maybe here, this is X0. Um, and very important, here's where we need the fact that we have a closed interval, so x and k converges to x0, but since the interval a comma b is closed, we actually get that x0 is in the interval a comma b. All right, now let's use the fact that this converges, so since this converges and f is continuous, we can apply f. Uh, to the convergence. So uh, since x and k goes to x0 and f is continuous, then we get f of x and k goes to f of x0. And in particular, the same thing is true for absolute values. So therefore, absolute value of x and k goes to absolute value of x at naught. And the point is, this is a finite number. Okay, so remember that. On the other hand, well, we never use the definition of xn. Well, remember, the way we define xn is that it's a counterexample to boundedness. But what do we know? We know that f of xn, by definition, is bigger than n. So the sequence f of xn, just by comparison, must go to infinity as n goes to infinity. However, since this is true for the sequence, so since the mother sequence goes to infinity, the subsequence must also go to infinity. So therefore, f of x and k must go to infinity as well. But that's a problem because now if you compare the two limits, on the one hand, it goes to this finite thing. On the other hand, it goes to infinity. But that just implies that f of x0 equals to infinity. And that's a contradiction. Makes no sense because the values of a function should be finite. All right, and let's prove it. That proves it, and thank you very much again.